Hosanna, Children's Ministry Leader at the Upper Room Southside Assembly of God. In partnership with Koinonia Ministries, we bring to you live children's services every Saturday at 10 a.m. I take this opportunity to invite you all to be a part of our fellowship. You will have fun and fellowship as we study the Word of God together. Come on every Saturday. I look forward to see you there. Hello, children. How are you? I heard a very crazy story, but it's true. And I invited my little friend so that we could say it together. Introduce yourself, my little friend. Hello, kids. My name is Maki. Are you ready? Are you ready to hear a crazy story today? Okay, well, start it, my little friend. There was in Israel a prophet named Hosea. What was the prophet's name, kids? Yes. Say it with me now, children. Hosea. One more time. Hosea. Okay, I hope you learned it. Yes, children. Hosea loved God and obeyed him. On a certain occasion, God spoke to him and gave him an order, saying, Hosea, I want to marry a prostitute. And he very scared replied, Mar may Marry a prostitute? Yes, a prostitute, God replied. Do you know what a prostitute is, children? Uh, well, a prostitute is a woman who has sex in exchange for money. Hosea was very scared. He asked God, How am I going to marry a prostitute? God, is this real what you want me to do? God replied, Yes, it is what I want you to do. You will marry her and have children. Just know that through this, I am sending a message to the people of Israel. Because Israel has abandoned me and behaved like a prostitute. Hosea, Hosea responded by saying, Okay, God, I will do what you say. You know, children, he found a prostitute named Gomer and he married her and had children with her. But it was God who put the name, the names to the sons of Hosea because God was very angry with Israel. Every name he gave had a meaning. Imagine, children, God said to Hosea, the third child you will call this child Loami, which means not my people, because the Israelites are no longer my people and I am no longer their God. God ceased to be their God. How sad is that, kids? Do you want to know why? It's because Israel was like Gomer, the prostitute. Israel had betrayed God by worshiping other, God, other idols or gods. Now repeat with me. Israel betrayed God by worshiping other gods. One more time. Israel betrayed God by worshiping other gods. Sadly, after Gomer married and had children with Hosea, she betrayed him by having other lovers, other men. Say with, the, say with your mouth like this. Huh? Huh? And not only that, but she went to live with one of those men kids. What a crazy woman, right? What an ungrateful woman. How dare does she do that? What a shameless person she was. God told Hosea to go look for her as if nothing had happened. Yes, as you heard kids, God told him to go and find her. Okay, everyone say, what? Yes, just like that, what? And since Hosea was very obedient to God, he went to look for her. And not only that, he had to pay the lover to release her to him. He paid 15 pieces of silver and 330 kilos of barley. What madness, right kids? God told Hosea, the Israelites are unfaithful to me because they worship false gods. However, go and love your wife just as I love the Israelites. 
And Hosea was very obedient. He always did what God told him to do. Although I imagine people criticize him. They might have thought that Hosea was crazy. Okay, kids. This was today's beautiful story. I hope, I hope you learn to do what God commands you. Even if it seems crazy or people criticize you because of obeying, you obey God. That is the most important thing to do. Okay, kids? Bye, children. Bye. Hello, kids. How are you? Today, we have a very exciting story to tell you. Are you ready to hear it? Okay, kids, well, pay close attention. The Babylonian army had taken captive some young Israelites, and among them there was one named Daniel, who was a servant of God. On one occasion, the king had a dream and called all the wise men, and he told them the dream and asked them to interpret it. But unfortunately, no one could give him the interpreta interpretation. So he went for Daniel to see if he could interpret that dream. When Daniel appeared before the king, the king told him his dream. Upon hearing the dream, Daniel was very scared because the dream referred to something bad for the king himself. That is why Daniel was a Afraid to tell the king the interpretation because he would be risking his life. The king could have killed him, thinking that it was only his inventions that caused him to stand, to stand still without saying anything. So the king said to him, tell me what it, what it is, because I know the spirit of the only God is with you. Daniel replied, how I wish that the meaning of the dream had to do with the enemies of your majesty. But it is not like that, my king. This dream refers to you. You are a very powerful king and pride, pride has seized you. And the most high God has decided to punish you, your majesty. You will no longer live with the people, but you will live with the animals and eat grass like them. You will bathe in the dew of heaven, and so you will be for seven years. At the end of those seven years, your majesty will recognize that the only most high God rules all the kingdoms of the earth, and that only he can make who he wants king. The tree was left with, the, with its trunks and roots. That means, that your majesty will reign again, but only when you have recognized the power of the God of heaven. I advise your majesty to stop doing wrong and to help the poor and needy people. Perhaps this is how your majesty can live in peace and happiness. A year later, the king was walking through his palace and said, how great is Babylon, and I was the one who made it big and beautiful to show my power to the whole world. And at that moment, a voice from heaven said to him, At this moment, you will become an animal. And so it was, children. Look at that horrible animal. It is King Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel did what God commanded him to do. And God not only took care of Daniel saving his life, but also fulfilled what Daniel had interpreted. Daniel was obedient to God, and even though he was in danger, he obeyed. God humbled the king for being proud by turning him into an animal for seven years until he recognized that God is the only and sovereign and he has all the power to do what he wants, children. Okay, kids, now repeat with me. Lord, help me to do what you say. One more time, kids. Lord, help me to do what you say. 
Very good, kids. Bye. Hi, kids. How are you doing today? Okay, I'm so glad that you are doing oh, fine. And to those that are not doing good, you see that soon you will be doing better. So, are you ready to listen to today, for today's story? Yes? Okay, I am ready too. But this is weird, right kids? Have you heard about Jeremiah's underpants before? Mm -hmm. I, was this, I, I was just as, as you at the first time, kids. Let me tell you that I didn't knew about it before. But now that I know, I want to share with you. Do you want to know about this? Yes? Okay. Well, let me tell you that God called Jeremiah at a young age to be a prophet. But you know, kids, Jeremiah said, but God, I am too young. I cannot speak in public. So God touched Jeremiah's lip and said, Jeremiah, don't say that you are too young. Well, from this moment on, you will speak for me. You will go wherever I send you. You will say everything I tell you. Don't be afraid. I will be with you every day to take care of you. So kids, Jeremiah was very obedient to what God asked him to do. So God asked Jeremiah to buy an underpants of linen, a linen underpants. And look, we have an underpants here. This is very, very new. Look, it's new. It's very good. Well, let me tell you that history says that back then, the prophets used some um, used to wear some underpants that were long. And it also says that it has some straps. So it, you can tighten it to your waist. But now, kids, today we have different styles of underpants, right? Or, or, or boxer, as you call it now, okay? So, but today we have different models, different styles. So, kids, but you know what God asked Jeremiah to do? To buy a line of underpants and to wear it. And he also told him, do not wash it. You might be saying, like, what? Not washing your underpants? I don't know for how many times um, he used his underpants without washing it. It might be days, it might be um, weeks, months. I don't know, kids. But tell me, if you use your underpants for more than a month without washing it, how do you think it will be? Yuck, right? Like, it would stink, it would be dirty. Yes, but you know, kids, God also told Jeremiah to take the underpants and to go and take it and hide it in a cave. Yes, kids. So God told that to Jeremiah and Jeremiah obeyed God. So Jeremiah went and hide it in a cave. But you know, kids, time passed by and God called Jeremiah again. And he told him to go and look for the underpants to the cave. Do you want to see how that underpants is? Yes, look kids. Can you imagine how this underpants is after using it like for months or days without washing it? Who is it now kids? It's rotted. Yes, it have holes. Look, it's dirty. It stinks like yuck. Would you wear this again? No? Do you think a person would wear this again? No, right? Because it's useless. It, it is not good. It doesn't have the straps to tighten it to your waist. So this is useless, kids. Kids, do you want to know why God asked Jeremiah to do all these things? I don't hear you. Do you want to know? Yes? Okay. So, kids. God was very angry at the people of Judah. And he said, look, just as this underpants got rotted, I will make the kingdom of Judah and its capital of Jerusalem be rotted also. These are bad people. They, they are evil people. They don't 
uh, obey me anymore, God said, kids. And not only that, they worship other gods, kids. God wanted the people of Israel to comfort to his love. Yes, just as the new pants tighten it in, on your waist, God wanted you to, the people to do that also. And he said, and then they would be my people. But they didn't obey me. They did other things. They did what they wanted to do. If they did that, they would be my people. And they would enjoy a fame of respect. And the people would praise them. But they disobeyed me, said God. And that is how things will be done. Kids, it is so sad to be punished by God. These people disobeyed God. They were evil people. They were bad people. But Jeremiah was very obedient, right? Yes. But you know, these people disobeyed God and they suffered the Yes, the consequences. They suffer the consequences because of disobeying God. No, all of us are children of God. So if you are a son of God or a daughter of God, raise your hands. How many of you are a son of God? Of God? Yes? Okay, so if you are the children of God, God wants us to be obedient to Him. He wants us to be just as the new underpants. Yes, because, tell me, would you wear like your underpants like this without washing it after a week? No, right? It's dirty. We, you wouldn't wear that. And that's the same way God wants us to be clean. God wants you to be clean, your heart to be clean. God doesn't want sin in your heart, okay? So that's why we always need to obey God because God wants to have a, a friendship with us. God wants us um, to be close to him because he knows everything of us kids. And you know, whenever we obey God, everything goes well in life for us. So I hope that you all learn from this lesson and I hope that we, from now on, we be obedient kids of God, okay? So I, this is, was a weird story of Jeremiah's pants. So I hope you learned something and from now on, let's always obey God, whatever he tells us to do, even if it seems crazy, but let's always obey God. Okay, kids, bye-bye. Hey kids, are you ready to learn about the story of today? Cause I'm super duper excited to tell you. And I can assure you, it's a crazy story. It is a crazy one. So, what do you see here, kids? Yes, dry bones. And as the title said, the madness of talking to the dry bones. So I have a question for you guys. Would you talk to the dry bones? Let's say you see a dry bone in your kitchen and you'd be like, hey, how are you? Would you do that if you would raise your hands? Right, kids? Probably none of you would do that. Personally, I wouldn't talk to a dry bone. But I want to tell you that in the Bible, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 1 to 14, it talks about the body of dry bones. So, do you want to know a man that spoke to dry bones, but not chicken bones as this one? It was human bones. Do you want to know the name of the man? Yes, it's Ezekiel, kids. Ezekiel was brought to this valley of dry bones. And God said, you mortal man, do you think these bones can recover life? And Ezekiel responded, God, only you know. And then God said, you dry bones, listen to this message. Dry bones, I'm going to breathe the breath of life so you may receive life and revive. Imagine that dry bones going to receive life. Can you just think about think about it one second? And like like think, is that even possible for a dry bone to recover life? Right kids, it seems so crazy, but it is possible. You wanna know how it is? Okay, I'm gonna tell you. So if God tells you so let's say, let's say this, God tells you, you see bones in your house and God tells you, 
speak to them and tell them you're going to give them the breath of life and they will recover life. Would you? Right? Obviously not, right? But, and if I say, please recover life, recover life, I'm going to blow into you and I'm going to breathe the breath of life. Right? It didn't recover life because God didn't tell me to do that. But to Ezekiel, he did. And I'm going to tell you that he did this. I will breathe the breath of life and you will receive life as Ezekiel breathed God told him blow can you hear the noise kids can you hear the noise yes it's so loud it says that bone to bone came and it recovered flesh and skin you see the chicken here it has flesh it has bones and it has skin can you see it? I'm going to hold it for you, okay? So can you see the chicken? Yes, right? Does it have life? No, it doesn't. But a great army was formed in front of him. It had bone to bone came, it had flesh and it had skin. And it was a great army that arose in front of him, but it didn't have life. And God said, God said to him, I'm going to breathe the breath of life. Call the breath of life. Tell him that I ordered him to come from the four cardinal points to give life to these dead bones. Kids, can you see this? This is a live chicken. So when God said that and Ezekiel ordered the four cardinal points to breathe breath of, the breath of life into them, they recovered the life, kids. And this chicken is alive. I'm being honest. I'm scared to hold this chicken at the moment. But it happened. The skins, I mean, sorry, the bones, the dry, dry bones, the dry bones recovered the life. They went bone to bone, flesh and skin, and they had the breath of life. So, this is a crazy story, right? I told you it is a crazy one. Okay, kids. <clears throat> so, Ezekiel was very obedient, as you can see, because it's crazy to even just talk to dry bones. But God wanted to give a message to the Israelites because they said, we're lost. We're like dry bones. And God said, you Israelites believe that you are dead, but I'm your God and I will give you life because you are my people. So that was the message of God because Israel said, we are lost. We're like dry bones. But God said, I'm going to give you life. So Ezekiel was very obedient. It did not matter how crazy it would. It was to just talk to dry bones and just thinking that the dry bones was going to recover life, kids. But I want you to repeat this with me. God, even if it doesn't make sense, I know I have to obey you. One more time. Say, everybody say this, please. God, even if it doesn't make sense, I know I have to obey you. One more time, kids. God, I know even if it doesn't make sense, I know I have to obey you. Now, only the girls. Yes, girls. Now, only the boys. Very good. Now, all together, God, even if it doesn't make sense, I know I have to obey you. Kids, and this was the madness of talking to the dry bones. So one more time, who was the prophet talking to the dry bones? Yes, Ezekiel. And where is the story found? Yes, in Ezekiel 37, verses 1 to 14. So, I hope you like this story because I loved it.